These are the pretenders. The original lineup. On the left, we've got Pete Farndon. He was the bass player. Next to him is Martin Chambers on the drums. Of course, Chrissy Hind, the leader of the band, lead vocals, writes all the songs. And next to her, James Honeyman Scott on the lead guitars. They put out two albums that are both masterpieces. Little bit of background on Chrissy Hind. She's from Akron, Ohio, and she moved to London in the early 70s, coming up around the punk rock scene uh, with The Damned and The Clash, and then she started The Pretenders. And after they did these two albums, which were very successful, they were getting ready to do the third, and Pete Farndon and James Honeyman Scott, they were naughty boys, and their drug use was getting out of control, so she fired Pete Farndon in an effort to, I imagine, separate the two and keep the band going. Within a couple days of firing Pete Farndon, James Honeyman Scott OD'd. And within six months, Pete Farndon had died as well from an OD. They were getting ready to make a third record. Meanwhile, she was in a relationship with Ray Davies and pregnant with his child and that relationship was falling apart. So she had a quite a calamity going on uh, as she was writing this song back on The Chain Gang, which she started out writing for Ray Davies, and then it ended up being a tribute to James Honeyman Scott. They had an, an amazing career following this, this string of tragedies. Quite a testament to her perseverance. And the song is a masterpiece. It's pretty, simple on the surface when you're looking at it and as you get involved in learning it you realize the masterworks that are going on behind it because it's kind of a dark song it's sad and it gets to the bridge and it becomes really dark minor chords intense lyrics um, and then it uplifts with a key change and all of a sudden you kind of feel hopeful again let's take a look at it grab your guitar let's work it out so they had to bring in another guitar player or two and a bass player. So they bring in Billy Bremner to play the lead parts. He's playing a B-bender. Billy Bremner was from Rockpile. Um, and they also bring in Robbie McIntosh, who plays the rhythm guitars on this and we would become the uh, Pretenders guitar player for the next many years. And Tony Butler on the bass who is the bass player from Big Country, who happened to be around that day recording a Big Country record. Let's take a look at these chords. I'm playing it on the 12 string because it's got that like 12 string jangly sound, but they're probably just playing it on a six string Telecaster with a chorus pedal, but I don't have a chorus pedal, so we're gonna do it like this. First chord is a D chord with this high E. It's a D major add nine. So we've got an open D string, middle finger at the 11th fret of the G string, and the first finger at the 10th fret of the B string, the second string, and then an open E, so. Can you see that? It happens here too, at the fifth fret. And then an E minor seven, with just the first finger at the second fret of the A string, and this third fret B string. And as the song gets into it, there's this little master class move. So you're just adding these two notes to the E minor seven chord. So we've got this B-bender part that is the signature melody line of the song. Let's take a look at that. So you don't have to have a B-bender to play this part. So without one, you're playing this D chord without the root note, just starting here on the seventh fret of the fourth string. We're spelling out that D chord. And if 
you're doing it with a B bender, Let's try it. What do you say? Let's try it with the song. Vocals come in, and we go through the first verse. As the verse is, is ending up and we get to the chorus, we're going to start the chorus on this E minor 7 chord again. So we've got E minor 7 and A7. There's a rhythm guitar part in there that's going. But you can do that with another guitar player, or you can add it in with these chords. So you're doing an E minor seven and, and you're moving your pinky from the second string to the first string. And A7, suspended four, back to A7, suspended second, so. Back on the chain again. Four bars of just D e and A, and then it goes back in. So we do the second verse, and we're back into a chorus. There's one other little tricky thing that's happening in here. It's these harmonics. I'm playing this G chord, uh, like an F moved up two frets, and then I'm picking a harmonic at the 10th fret. So you have to like put your finger over the fret you want to hit and then plug it with your thumb behind there. Right there we've got four D chords with the open E string, D suspended second. And we're into the bridge. D minor, A7. So, that can be done with two guitars, or you can play just with this one. D minor, lift off your first finger. A7. And that same finger from the first fret open. So this is where the vocals get Pretty, pretty dark. The chords are dark. I'll die as I stand here today. It lifts up into this key change. We're making us pop. So when it
it goes to this key change, it's the same idea as the beginning. So we were doing this before. Now we're just gonna move these two fingers up a string to the fourth and the third string, and then up a couple frets here to the 13th fret. And then a F minor chord, but with these open strings up here. Now when we're playing this chord up here, we have to avoid these two strings unless you hold down this 12th fret. Now she's found a picture of them and it doesn't sound as sad. She's, it's kind of hopeful. How'd she do that? Since we switched keys, now the chorus is gonna be in a different key. It's gonna be at this F sharp minor and B, seven. And of course, the very last part, real simple, it's just an E chord and a B chord. That's gonna do it for now. My name's Fran Capitanelli, totally into the sound. Please subscribe. See you next time.